Coming up on Carolina Week, more people are dying on the roadways. Are prices at the pump to blame? The presidential campaign has come to North Carolina. Hear from a candidate who wants to make college free. And find out how man's best friend is shaking off that summer heat. All that and more Carolina Week starts right now. From the UNC School of Journalism and Mass Communication, covering Carolina in HD, this is Carolina Week. The semester has just begun, but it's not too early for students to begin choosing their favorite presidential hopefuls. Good evening, I'm Ben Smart. And I'm Sharon Nunn. Some students will watch tonight's big Republican debate, but we'll get to politics in just a bit. First, we turn an eye to the rising number of traffic deaths in our state. Distracted driving is often a cause of accidents, but researchers say there's another contributing factor. Mackenzie Bennett joins us live in the studio to explain. Mackenzie? That's right, Sharon. We all like to save a little green at the pump, but experts say lower gas prices could be partly to blame for an increase in fatal car accidents. If you've been to the pump lately, then you've seen the lower gas prices. It's great for your wallet, but cheaper gas is resulting in more deadly accidents. 634 North Carolinians have died in car wrecks since January. That's 100 more accidents than at this time last year. Primary cause that we're seeing this year is due to an increase in the amount of travel on our roadways. In the first six months of this year, we're nationally, we've exceeded 1.5 trillion miles in vehicle travel. We haven't seen those levels since 2007. And this trend is expected to continue. Gas prices are still dropping, attracting more drivers to the roads. So I actually used to have a moped, and I got rid of my moped because I felt comfortable enough with gas prices. I just drive to school every day now. Looking at a trip to D.C. in a couple weeks, you know, driving up there is totally affordable. Keep it low so we can go. That's all. Keep it low so we can go. These prices are also attracting a higher risk group, teen drivers. <laughs> They are more likely in some cases to be involved in a crash or in possibly a fatal collision than other age groups. Despite the increase in traffic deaths, Harkey says compared to years past, the numbers are still an improvement thanks to safer cars. Researchers say gas prices will continue dropping for the rest of the year. That's likely to lead to even more miles traveled by drivers in our state. And even that could lead to more accidents. That's Mackenzie Bennett live in our studio. Thanks, Mackenzie. Silent Sam, the statue means different things to different people. Sierra Brooke joins us live in our satellite studio with a look at an initiative to contextualize Silent Sam and other monuments on campus. Sierra. Thanks, Ben. I've spoken to several UNC students and faculty members, and the resolution is not quite clear. That's why September 2nd, Third Chancellor Fultz set forth a task force to examine UNC's historical monuments, which include Silent Sam. They say their time's the charm. If so, then why is Silent Sam still standing tall? Last year, students rallied in protest against the monument. Kara Pugh was one of them. For her, there is one solution. I would like those statues taken down and put into a museum where they can be properly contextualized. And that could happen after the task force reviews historical monuments on campus, such as Silent Sam. In an open letter to the Carolina community, Chancellor Carol Folt said the task force will look at four possibilities. Historical markers or exhibits, improving published information about monuments, optioning a public space for a permanent UNC collection, and exploring options for an online orientation program about the history. Winston Crisp, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs and member of the task force, says inclusivity is key. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we need to figure out how to involve multiple people uh, and how to make sure that all of the different perspectives and ways that people look at history on campus have an opportunity to be heard. And for Kara, there's one thing she wants. I want the task force to remember the power that privilege holds and that people without those privileges don't have the power. The task force has two dates to respond back to Chancellor Folt, October 1st and April 1st of the new year. That's Sierra Book live in our satellite studio. Thank you. 
Social justice issues such as police brutality continue to be hot button topics. Our Andre Rowe reports about how UNC students are learning to cope with events and, and trends they might find troubling. UNC students read the names of female victims of police brutality at one of the many vigils held on campus. But unlike other vigils, this month's Say Her Name event serves a unique purpose. Past demonstrations brought awareness. These demonstrations are bringing comfort. This summer has been emotionally taxing. The last few years have been emotionally taxing. UNC senior June Bichet is a member of the Real Silent Sam Coalition. She's also the creator of Black Hill, and healing initiative targeted to black women. Well, the vigil was supposed to be a place where we could just come together as a community and heal. B. Shea believes students need special comforting when dealing with social issues. I think now people are more like tuning it out just because it's so much. And so I think at this point people are hurting more than being angry. Some students have begun taking advantage of student wellness. Dr. Alan Obar, Director of Counseling and Psychological Services, or CAPS, said in an email, it would be very important to remain emotionally stable and calm if possible. A response of anger and violence most likely will only escalate a conflict. Other students heal using a more tangible approach. I journal. I write it out. You know, before I feel myself getting really tense, I sit here and it's like, okay, what's bothering you? What's irking you? Bichet and other students hope to get Black Heel up and running this fall. Students seeking help now should take advantage of CAPS, UNC's free counseling service. In Chapel Hill, I'm Andre Rowe reporting. Event organizers say they believe cases of police brutality are underreported. They believe rallies and demonstrations will give victims more courage to come forward. Police brutality is one of the social issues Democratic presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders is emphasizing on his campaign tour. Chants and cheers in the packed Greensboro Coliseum Sunday night. Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders hit on just about every popular topic from immigration to the economy. But he got the most response when he talked about mandating free college tuition. That is why, that is why I have introduced legislation which will make every public college and university tuition free. Sanders leads national front runner Hillary Clinton in both Iowa and New Hampshire. The first Democratic debate is October 13th. The general election is still more than a year away, but here on campus, politics is already on the agenda. Carolina Week reporter Gus Keylander shows us which candidates UNC students are talking about. With an election year looming, politics is taking over the conversation. There's Hillary, the Donald, and Jeb. But among UNC students, one name keeps coming up again and again. I like Bernie Sanders. Personally, I'm leaning towards Bernie Sanders. Just from what I've seen, I really like Bernie Sanders. So why is self-described socialist Bernie Sanders so popular on campus? Professor of political science Thomas Carsey has an idea. I think Bernie Sanders represents uh, someone who's outside of the normal party process. He's uh, independent. Um, he's got uh, some pretty progressive liberal ideas that I think uh, many students might be uh, attracted to. A recent North Carolina poll showed Donald Trump leading among the Republican contenders. But, according to Professor Carsey, observers should take the number of candidates into account when looking at Trump's rise. If Donald Trump gets 25% in a poll, for example, one way to look at that is he's leading amongst all the others. Another way to look at that is look at all the press attention he's received and there's still 75% of the people picking someone else. In the same poll, a third candidate did surprisingly well and caught the attention of at least some students. I think these nuts has some uh, really, good, uh, really good ideas on policy. So, you know, I'm sure he's a 15-year-old boy out of Iowa, but, you know, whatever. Not a single vote gets cast for five more months. It's going to be an interesting ride. In Chapel Hill, I'm Gus Kilander reporting. You know, Sharon, I didn't know that anybody could take a run for the presidential uh, position. Maybe you should take a run, Sharon. Well, I am pretty organized, and I could actually see myself doing that. Hey, Team Sharon all the way. I'm good for it. Some UNC students say enough is enough when it comes to weigh-ins. Up next, we'll show you how they're smashing negative body issues. diagnosed NC Superior Court Judge Carl Fox with blood cancer in April, and now community members are rejoining his battle to recovery. 
It's called Save the Fox, an organization with a mission to find a bone marrow match for Fox and others in the need of a transplant. Folks met at Al's Diner in Pittsburgh on Tuesday night to sign up, swish, and swab up. Some even donated cash to the cause. Organizers say they'll continue their efforts until Judge Fox finds a match. An obscure campus regulation could cost you money, time, and your mode of transportation. The UNC Public Safety Office is also cracking down on scooters. All scooters must have a license plate and be registered with the DMV. Campus parking requires a parking permit available at the Public Safety Office for $25. All mopeds parked outside assigned motorcycle areas are subject to being impounded. Chapel Hill's Franklin Street is home to almost 100 restaurants and bars. Despite the street's popularity, there's a pattern of establishments going out of business and new ones taking their places. Reporter Paige Hopkins examines the revolving door nature of businesses on our Franklin Street. Opening and closing signs like these have become commonplace in downtown Chapel Hill. Four Corners is one of few restaurants on Chapel Hill's main drag to keep its doors open for more than three decades. Manager Christian Baucom attributes the Tar Heel basketball-themed restaurant's success to its historical ties to the university. People like to come back. They like to reminisce of what they did back in the day. You know, it's a part of Chapel Hill. After this long, it's definitely stood the test of time, I should say. A test that many other establishments have failed. Assistant Director of the Downtown Chapel Hill Partnership, Bobby Funk, says area restaurants must have a something special in order to be successful. And whenever you look at any uh, thriving business, you, you think about the quality of the product, the quality of the service, um, the uniqueness of the product, and, and, some, and some of the magic elements that make a, a business thrive. Especially when there's so much competition. The Downtown Chapel Hill website lists a total of 96 restaurants and bars. We have a very concentrated market with a high uh, amount of uh, stock. But what about chain restaurants? Shouldn't places like Krispy Kreme be more stable? If you take Krispy Kreme, it goes directly up against places like Sugarland, who, um, well, they haven't been here for 20 or 30 years, but they are very well established um, in that market. So far this year, four restaurants and one bar had to close their doors. But despite all the openings and closings, Franklin Street remains the hub of local activity. In Chapel Hill, Paige Hopkins reporting. And that pattern continues. A total of five restaurants and two bars have made their debut on Franklin Street just this year. 91% of college females say they di they've dieted to lose weight. One organization is challenging women not to be weighed down by the pressure to slim down. Students stepped up to slam scales Tuesday afternoon, the purpose to smash body image issues. The group Southern Smash brought baseball bats and sledgehammers to break scales and raise awareness about eating disorders. Experts say it's not the number on the scale that's important, it's how you feel about yourself. The dog days of summer are coming to an end and Orange County Animal Service is celebrated with its 11th annual dog swim. Man's best friend jumped into fun at the Hargraves Community Center pool on Sunday. Dogs chase tennis balls and into the water, and they also chase each other around the pool deck. Pups and their owners took a dip together as they shook off the last few drops of the season. Proceeds from the event are benefiting animal services. Take a rest in the shade to escape these hot temps and humid temperatures. Cat Campbell is next with weather. Welcome back to Carolina Week. I'm meteorologist Kat Campbell, and we've had an absolutely beautiful start to our week. We had cooler temperatures at the beginning of the week, and we'll have nice temperatures to continue through this week. We've got we've got temperatures in the eight, around 80 degrees right now. Dew points are sitting very comfortable at the time, and that means that we have less water vapor in our air, and with less water vapor in the air, we're going to see some nice temperatures coming later on in this week. We have temperatures at 84 tomorrow, 86 on Friday, and then we'll rise to the upper 80s on Saturday and Sunday. So the key for tomorrow is that it'll be a bit more humid, but temperatures should remain the same. So if you're heading out the door, I recommend wearing shorts and a t-shirt or a nice summer sundress. Just make sure that you don't leave the house without some sunglasses tomorrow. And as we head into our weekend, we'll have beautiful conditions for the UNC game. Temperatures are going to be at 63 on tailgate. At tailgate time kickoff, temperatures are going to be in the upper 70s. Post game temperatures should be in the lower 80s. So really comfortable temperatures for the game. And with Carolina blue skies, hopefully we can get a good win out of this game, a good Tar Heel win. 
And back to our, seven day, our five day forecast. Let's flip back to the beginning here. Here's our fall averages for this time of year. On average, we see temperatures in the lower 80s in mid-September, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. So we're on, out, we're on track to continue with this record. 76 in early October, and then 72 mid-October. So we should be in the upper 60s by late October. So the fall weather will come soon, but we do have another week of this summer weather. And then take a look at our low, overnight low temperatures by late October. Temperatures should be in the mid-40s. So we'll have cooler temperatures on the way, but just not yet here. Tomorrow, as you're waking up, temperatures should be around 60 degrees. Lunchtime temperatures in the upper 70s. And then by 5 o'clock, temperatures should be in the lower 80s and when all this sunshine is really going to allow us to warm up quickly tomorrow though you may want to leave the house with a sweater you're quickly going to want to take that off and be in that summer attire like i recommended earlier but let's get back to tonight tonight we'll have just a few clouds with light winds temperatures in the upper 50s here so it'll be a bit chilly tonight you want that jacket tonight and tomorrow morning but other than that beautiful weather across the board this week our five-day rain outlook here is key it's our first umbrella free week in quite some time here we're expected to see no rain for the next five days so we'll have very pleasant conditions and you don't have to worry about carrying an umbrella in your backpack this week and our surface map here shows we've got this cold front out to our west, but that's really not going to affect us because we have high pressure dominating our region right now. And high pressure is associated with sinking air, and without the, ab the ability for this air to rise, condense, and cool, we won't see any clouds form this week, so we'll have some absolutely beautiful weather this week. And without those umbrellas, we'll have just great conditions, and you can really get outside and enjoy this weather all week here. And back to our seven-day four or five-day forecast, excuse me. Mid, mid 80s throughout the rest of the week. The weekend will get a bit warmer and that's when those humid conditions should arrive. And then by Monday, we have a cold front arriving. And Monday or Tuesday is when we'll see the big cool down this week. So hopefully this means we'll have some nice weather for that game. You know, the more blue the skies are, the better off yeah, it should be. Yeah, all sunshine, no rain for the heels this weekend. We're hoping for a good win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just might need that luck. Thanks, Kat. Thank and when we come back, Find out why Coach Fedora says Illinois is the best team UNC has faced so far this season. Welcome back to Carolina Week. I'm Kelly Glendinning with Sports. After a blowout win against North Carolina a and last weekend, the Heels faced 2-0 Illinois in Keenan Stadium on Saturday. This matchup marks the third between the two, the first since 1987, when the Heels beat the Fighting Illini 34-14. Illinois' defense is very impressive, allowing only 1.5 points per game, tied for the lowest in the nation. The offense isn't too shabby either. The Illini have scored just 93 points in two games. Granted, these teams weren't from a Power 5 conference, but numbers like that are still impressive. Another thing to watch out for during the Illinois game is Quinshaw Davis breaking UNC's touchdown catches record. The senior wide receiver tied the record of 21 touchdowns with this snag against NC State last season. Dave, Davis had several catches like this one right here and this one against North Carolina A&T but failed to score. The Fighting Illini haven't allowed a touchdown this season but Davis is ready to change that and break a record too. I'd rather get the win than uh, break a record any day. So uh, I'm, just, I'm waiting patient, and, uh, but when it happens, I am going to be excited. The number three men's soccer team puts up its undefeated record on the line when the Heels face number two Notre Dame at Fetzer on Friday. The Irish are coming off a one to nothing loss to unranked Xavier. This is the Heels' second ACC opponent and first ranked team they face this season. A player to watch on the Irish is John Gallagher. He leads the team in goals and points on the season. Former quarterback and self-described supervisor of morale, Caleb Presley, rose to fame because of the jerseys he wore. Now he's returned to prominence because of the shirts he's selling. Presley, now working for a website called Barstool Dixie, has released a likeness line, featuring caricatures that bear a striking resemblance to SEC football players. The shirt that's getting the most attention is the one that features the likeness of NCAA President Mark Emmert. Presley implied that the players would profit from their respective shirts after leaving school, though he will keep the profits from the Emmert shirts, saying that he thought that's what Emmert himself would do. Now, are you guys going to buy a shirt from um, I think Kayla? I'm going to get a t-shirt. I'm all for supporting athletes. Great. And I'm always down for shopping, so <laughs> sign me up. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Of course. One North Carolina woman is carrying on her late husband's wishes. Using what's inside these to teach prisoners the power of spirituality.
United States has more prisoners than any other country in the world. Sending and receiving mail is the only contact that some prisoners have with the outside. I spent the day with one North Carolina group which uses the power of postage to rehabilitate prisoners. Correspondents here opening the letters. Ben Palmer rips open dozens of these. One day's mail. Every day. Envelopes and inside are letters from prisoners. Prisoners writing to the Human Kindness Foundation. It's an organization that aims to teach inmates spirituality. This is not an unusual letter. Co-director Sita Lozoff has been reading and responding to inmate mail since the 70s. Dear Human Kindness Foundation, I want to thank you very much for your support. Before I found out about this organization, I was stuffed with anger, ready to retaliate when released. The inmate says reading books written by Sita's husband, Bo, transformed his life. Spiritually, I never felt this way before. My mind has been able to focus more on the present than dwelling on the past. Sita created the Human Kindness Foundation almost 20 years ago with Bo, who died in 2012. I've been doing this for over 40 years. I love writing to these guys. The Human Kindness Foundation receives hundreds of letters each week. Many of these letters are from prisoners asking for words of wisdom and copies of books written by Bo Lozoff, which teach that a prison cell can actually be a place of spiritual transformation. And we've sent out over 400,000. My guess is that millions have read it by the letters that I get where people pass it around and they found it in the library. Sita says prisons have become her second home. The first time I was ever in prison, I felt like I was sitting in my own living room. I was so comfortable and I remain that comfortable. Sita and Bo began working with prisoners after having a spiritual revelation of their own. We were 60s hippies and um, we were both raised atheists. And then we took LSD and found out um, that there really was a God. Even though Bo can't be here, Sita will be writing to inmates. Some of them really still make me cry. Day in and day out. This is my calling as well as it was Bo's calling. Well, that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thanks for watching and good night.